My name's Margaret Bullitt. I was already a customer of First United Bank. So I'm standing in line at the bank here, and it just happened to be two days after I'd had a dream where I stood at a lectern and I had nothing to say. And I woke up that morning feeling a little shaken, and I thought to myself, I should find a Toastmasters group. So I'm standing in line and I hear laughter, and then I hear applause, and I look through this glass window, and I ask the person behind the desk, what's going on in there? They seem to be having a good time. She goes, oh, that's the Toastmasters group. <laughs> I said, you, you're kidding. <laughs> so I thought that was such a, a God moment. I'm Carol Lee, and I am the president of Fredericksburg Toastmasters. First United Bank's conference room has been wonderful for our Fredericksburg Toastmasters meeting. The conference room is large enough to hold our members comfortably. Having a large TV in this conference room has been wonderful to broadcast the rest of the members that do join us online. First United Bank's purpose is to inspire and empower others to spend life wisely. This community room fits into that perfectly. We, we have four pillars, faith, financial well-being, health, and personal growth, with the use of the community room fitting into the personal growth uh, pillar. and welcome to Fredericksburg Toastmasters. Let's welcome Neil as he leads us in our opening and pledge. We could bow our heads, please. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come together in this meeting, let us celebrate and ask your blessings on our own personal growth and allow us to be more, become more effective communicators and leaders. We ask this in your Son's name. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, Neil's going to share our club mission online for our online attendees, and you should have it at your desk or if you're facing the screen when he shares it. All right, well you should, sorry Doris, hopefully that you will have it. Okay, if we could read the club mission at this time together. We provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. We have one visitor today who is actually partaking in a role. We like to invite visitors, if they're comfortable, to come up and just introduce themselves and give a brief introduction and why you are here at our meeting today. Well, I'm Wes Barnett. Uh, I came to Fredericksburg 45 years ago when it was a very small German community. They'd invite you to the dance, but they really didn't want you to come. <laughs> uh, I was invited by Margaret Bullitt and uh, came to see what's going on. Laugh. Well, okay, well, I thought I was a celebrity, and just as I walked in, I found I'm, I'm just a substitute. <laughs> Whoever was supposed to be here couldn't make it. Um, again, I, I do a lot of things around town. I get to do Santa Claus in a lot of places, and uh, I thought I would share one of my experiences. I went to a grade school for Santa pictures and all, and the day I was there, all the kids brought presents for the teacher. And the teacher's, you know, up in front, and I'm just kind of sitting over by the tree, paying attention, and there's little boxes up on the counter there, and one of the boxes fell off. She set it to 
towards the end. She opened the first box, and she knew that child's parents owned the candy store. She opened the box, and it was great, marvelous chocolate candy. And she opened it, and she took a bite, and, oh, it was great. It was good. She loved it. Thank you so much. She opens the next one. That child's parents owned the jewelry store. So she knows what to expect. She opens it, and there's this beautiful necklace. And she holds it up and shows it to everybody, and she tries it on. And, oh, it's so beautiful. It's great. Well, she's a little nervous because the box that fell off, that child's parents owned the liquor store. <laughs> now then, she didn't know exactly what to do, so she holds it up. And bends it. it fell off. There's a little wet spot in the corner. And so she takes it, and she puts her finger on it, she tastes it, and she says, uh, is it cognac? And then she says, no, she tastes it, and she looks on the box, and she, she tastes it again, and she says, is it a fine bourbon? And then she thinks again, no, it must be wine. She says, Johnny, is this wine that you brought? He says, oh, no, ma'am. He says, my parents won't let me anywhere close to the liquor. He says, mine has a puppy in it. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. To lead our meeting today is none other than John Hutchinson. Hutch, please welcome our Toastmaster. Thank you, Carol. Wonderful to be here. Welcome to our guests. Welcome to our filming crew. It's always delightful to have that kind of opportunity. And I also am a substitute, last-minute substitute. Margaret called me yesterday as I'm driving back from the Toastmasters meeting that we sponsor at the Connolly Unit in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice at Kennedy. And, and so where the theme is Fredericksburg then and now. The speeches are Fredericksburg then and now. So I think I could probably do that. I remember I came to Fredericksburg the first time in October 1985. And it was a sleepy little town at that time. And certainly, if we were going to have any kind of meeting or interaction, we would probably have a German prayer. There would be something in, in the German language. So if we somebody can translate our mission into German, then that might be more fitting with Fredericksburg then. We're meeting here today at First United Bank. And First United Bank was not First United Bank when I started to come to Fredericksburg. It was Pioneer Bank, and it's located on Highway 16 North in a very nice stone building that's pretty much kind of empty at this time. And we've watched Pioneer Bank grow into a very large institution in banking uh, company in Fredericksburg. So our next position is is our general evaluator, Doris. And Doris is online with us today. Would you like to introduce your team, please? Absolutely. Thank you, Toastmaster of the Day, John Hutchison. We have a fantastic team that will be leading the meeting today. First up is Arkham Marion. Please help me welcome Carol Lee. As your grammarian today, I have a couple of responsibilities. The first is to provide a word of the day. The word I've chosen is reciprocate, which you should see up here. It is a verb, and the definition that I chose that I hope you will use today when you speak is to return in kind or degree. An example, how do we reciprocate the generosity First United Bank has shown our club by allowing us to meet here free each week? Several of us have brought snacks for the bank employees and put them in the bank room. And I just wanted to show you the one that I made. If you recall, last week I talked about my love of paper. So I made a little box that says, it might sound cheesy, but we think you're great. Thanks for all you do. And the reason I did that is because Margaret found out that the bank employees really love Cheez-Its. So each of them are getting Cheez-Its in this little gift box. 
So remember, when you're speaking today, try to use reciprocate. Another of my responsibilities as grammarian is to listen to each person and how well are they using the English language, note if there are memorable phrases, and then also note are there misuses of the English language, and I'll give my report at the end. Thank you. Next up is our A, A counter. I had to add some Canadian humor, A. So next up is our A counter, Daniel Haguki. Please help me welcome Daniel. We have a volunteer, as Dan has not shown his face in our room, and we'll welcome our Anita as the substitute our counter. You will hear this sound if you say the word ah, um, so, or other filler words because we are trying to eradicate those words from our speaking so we sound more put together. And I will do my best to listen and hear them. Thank you, Anita. To keep us very timely, please welcome our timer, Pete Del Forge, to explain what he'll be doing today. Thank you, Doris. I assure you, I'm no substitute. I'm the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> but all of our prepared speeches and official speeching will be timed today. It's important in Toastmasters that we not only learn to speak, but to speak within constraints if we have time limits. So both of our speeches today run five to seven minutes. Five minutes represents the minimum amount of time that they're supposed to speak. Seven minutes is a maximum. And then we give them 30 minutes, 30 seconds after the maximum to wrap up. And then, so what you'll see is at the minimum, you'll see a green light today. At the maximum, you'll see a red light. And in the middle, to kind of spur you along, is the yellow caution light. So hopefully, as I give you the timing signals here, you'll reciprocate by following and wrapping up your speech in the appropriate time. Pete, you are the real deal for sure. We glad we are glad that you are. Please welcome back our Toastmaster of the day, John. Thank you. And I'll reciprocate and appreciate Robert Deming for translating our <laughs> mission into German, and I'll let him read it at some point in time. Robert is our first speaker. Robert is a distinguished Toastmaster and 25-year member of our club. Today he will be presenting Fredericksburg then about the Fredericksburg of 30 years ago Following his presentation will be Margaret Bullock, who will present Fredericksburg now. Margaret is a new resident of Fredericksburg. Robert. We don't normally have meetings like this where two speakers reciprocate. <laughs> kind of a tag team with a lady in the pretty blue dress. There's a story told about a Greek king in the ancient times who built a ship. His name was Theseus. He built a wooden ship and he set off on a very, very long voyage. And that voyage was so long that parts of the ship broke or rotted and they had to replace these things one at a time as they failed. And by the time they got to their ultimate destination, there was nothing left of the original ship. Is this the same ship that left port with Theseus many years before? I arrived in Fredericksburg in 1992. Some of you have been here much longer. Wes, you've been here a very long time. Tim and Linda, I don't know when you got here, but it was well before 92. John came here often, starting with 85. Pete was here in 94. Um, and I got here in 92. So we remember times past in Fredericksburg, and others of you are much newer, and you don't know times past. So how do people experience Fredericksburg? Well, I think that the lifeblood of a 
of the town is the business community. So a lot of what I'm going to talk about are the businesses that were here when I arrived. And that's how people experience the town. The tourists these days, they go to a couple of wineries. They, they go down Main Street. They may buy something here or there. They stay in a and b They'll eat in a restaurant. And that's their front experience. We have the same experience. It's just a, a bigger database of that in a long period of time. So how do we think about that with that time of 30 years, how do we think about what's happened in this community? Over those years, lots has changed. I think of City Hall as the new City Hall. It's not new at all. It was, I don't know, 25 years ago it was built. But for Margaret, it's the only City Hall she's ever known. So she doesn't think of as the new City Hall. <clears throat> South Milan Street, which kind of ends right over here, used to stop at Live Oak. And every time I drive live, uh, down South Milam, I, I think about that. When I drive around Friendship Lane, I think of it as a new street. It's not new at all. When I moved into my neighborhood, there was only one B&B &B in the neighborhood. Everything else was a single family dwelling, and that was my B&B. &B. And now half of my neighborhood are short-term rentals. Those were my experiences and the experiences of many of you, too. Well, there's, there's a lot more, and I'm not listing all of them. <clears throat> I went to an event at Pat's Hall across the creek from me with this big oak tree. I went to the South Star, which was a bar, just one time, where the owner played the guitar and his wife tended bar. I went, I've been dancing in Turner Hall. Gone. All of them. Gone, gone, gone. I went to movies at the Palace Theater. The 87 Ice House that's now closed up. There was another ice house on, 80, on 16 North that was, I don't remember the name of it, <clears throat> perhaps some of you do. I was having a beer there one afternoon, just went there once with my friend Tim Stewart, and he said that it was said that the residents of the nursing home next door would sometimes sneak over for a beer. <laughs> well, that's gone. The ice house became part of the nursing home. Do you remember the 87 drive-in theater? All I remember is the screen, which lasted much long, uh, longer than the business did. I once shopped at the original HEB, which is now part of the Nimitz Museum. Super S was our neighborhood grocery store for a while. I shopped at Knopp and Mexer's right downtown, both the grocery store and the clothing store. They're gone. All of those. Gone, gone, gone. The Traveler's Cafe preceded me, but it was famous, and many may, you may have been there. Uh, likewise, the Tower Drive-In. The only connection I have with that is one of my friends from business was a car hop there when she was a teenager. I thought the peach tree was the best lunch in town. The burgers were great at Porky's, and my kids in high school ate there once a week. They're gone, all gone. Do you remember Alfredo's restaurant on West Main Street? Lunch was two inch gelatos, rice beans, chips, and tea for $2.99. The Spanish Cellar Bistro in a basement, Caddy Corner to Chase Bank, where they had great paella and sangria. I bought a washer and dryer on, on West Main Street and it's electric one time. I bought a tie in Staling Brothers, which was in that golden block downtown. <laughs> I had lunch often at the Enchanted Inn, just north of town, which we thought was the most fabulous Mexican food in the world. And it's gone, but there is a food trailer. Michelle, who ran that uh, restaurant, has a food trailer behind the Elon gas station. It's the same food. It's the same wonderful greasy enchiladas that she served at the Enchanted Inn. I remember Cranky Frank's barbecue and Ken Hall barbecue before that and Burke's barbecue downtown. The Glockenspiel Cafe, I didn't know that place, but following in that space was Oma Cook's, which I did get to, and then the Plateau Cafe, and now it's Hondo's. Some of you may remember many years before when it was Kraskoff Tractor. I've had enchiladas at Los Compadres at midnight. Long gone. I used to have coffee at the Coffee Clutch. Zio Sporting Goods, where you could buy worms 
right there on Main Street for fishing. The, the cookie jar is a favorite for downtown workers. How about Engel's Deli? Do you know what the Tuesday lunch, plate lunch special was? It was, it was meatloaf and mashed potatoes, my favorite. I tried to make it there on Tuesdays. Although the women that I knew at the time thought the fruited chicken salad was the best thing ever. Andy's Diner, how many meetings did I go to at Andy's Diner? Many, many, many. You may remember the Domino Parlor with the wooden Indian out front. The only restaurant with the dress code was the blue room upstairs in the gallery. And the dress code was that men had to wear a shirt with a collar. <laughs> Fredericksburg Bakery, where I bought pastries for my B&B &B quite often. Dietz Bakery. And in this town, when you say Dietz Bakery, you should put your hand over your heart and sigh. <sighs> Gone. George's old German bakery, it's still there, but it doesn't have the Stammschmidt table anymore where people had conversations in German. Dooley's was a constant for generations. Did you ever go into Davis Saddlery? It was by where ATB is now. They made saddles there. It was the real deal. And do you remember the turkeys and the turkey farm? Gone. The Fredericksburg of 30 years ago is gone. Gone, gone, gone. <clears throat> was the ship of Theseus the same ship when it arrived in its final port? Is Fredericksburg the same town that I moved to or you moved to? Am I the same person that moved here 30 years ago? I'm going to close with a poem by Lebanese-American poet Cahil Gibran. It's called Fear. It is said that before entering the sea, a river trembles with fear. She looks back at the path she has traveled from the peaks of the mountains, the long winding road crossing forests and villages, and in front of her, she sees an ocean so vast that to enter there seems nothing more than to disappear forever. But there is no other way. The river cannot go back. Nobody can go back. To go back is impossible. The river needs to take the risk of entering the ocean because only then will fear disappear. Because that's where the river will know it's not about disappearing into the ocean, but of becoming the ocean. Are you the same person you were 30 years ago? Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Robert. Fredericksburg then. There's a lady I remember when I came to Fredericksburg and met her for the first time. Her name is Erna Diedel Heinen. And I called her on the phone and got this gravelly voice uh, person. And, and I said, Mr. Heinen, is, is Erna there? And she said to me, I'm Erna Heinen. <laughs> and for the rest of our relationship, she teased me about that. Erna Diedel Heinen was a lady of significant force in the community in the 80s and 70s and 60s. There was a move in Fredericksburg to board up Main Street, kind of bulldoze the buildings down and change things into something different. And there were a group of people in Fredericksburg that said, no, we don't want to do that. We want to maintain this look that we have of Fredericksburg and we want to maintain the feel and we want to open our doors to tourists because we can make money from <laughs> tourists. That was an economic decision that the community made and Erna Dietl Heinen was one of the real powerhouses behind that decision and I'm just delighted to know her today and if any of you know Karen Astrike, Erna Dietl Heinen is Karen's mother. Anyway, our second speaker today is Margaret Bullitt. Margaret is a relatively new resident of Fredericksburg coming from the Pacific Northwest, and she'll talk about Fredericksburg now. So our second speaker, Margaret.
When I joined Toastmasters, time management wasn't easy for me. I was quick to commit. Then I would have an internal struggle between my fantasy of being amazing and the sense that the only way to be that glorious creation of my own making would be to control and dominate myself. The essential me naturally rebelled. After all, who wants to be treated like a slave? I jumped into Fredericksburg Toastmasters eagerly, volunteering to speak almost immediately. But then my demons emerged. Were these folks really so kind as they seemed? Were they really so encouraging and supportive as they promised to be? One week, I showed up late and missed leading the opening prayer and pledge. Another week, I struggled to manage my time and had an inadequately prepared speech. I referenced scribbled note cards clutched in my nervous hands. I rambled and digressed, going several minutes over. I was oblivious to the time clock. I sensed the group wanted the best for me, even as they hoped for the best from me. Patience is practiced in Toastmasters. Everyone reciprocates. Everyone has areas where they can still grow, even members who've been giving speeches for decades. Why this long introduction for a speech on Fredericksburg now, you ask? I see my time with Fredericksburg Toastmasters as a microcosm of my experience living here the past two and a half years. A Seattle friend who was a native Texan, when she learned I was to travel to Marble Falls for holistic dental work back in 2021, told me, if you're going to Marble Falls, you should visit Fredericksburg. I asked, why? I'd never heard of either Marble Falls or Fredericksburg. It's a tourist destination. Not interested, I replied. Like Leavenworth, she added, not the prison. She meant the little faux Bavarian town east of the Cascades in Washington State. Still not interested. They have nice shops and restaurants. What kind of shops? Like cowboy boots? Sold. I did buy some cowboy boots my first time here. As fate would have it, through a last minute Columbo style conversation with the owner of the store, I was invited back for a six hour tour of the hill country. That same store owner advised me to return to Seattle and disentangle yourself. Come live in Fredericksburg. And I did. I sold everything I had and I bought a small ranch. I observed that all roads seemed to lead to Fredericksburg. Like a hub of a wheel, it took me over a year to figure out north from south and east from west. There used to be lots of peach orchards, I was told. Most of them had been turned into vineyards, some 150 wineries in the area. This is the way Napa was before it became Napa, I was told. Drinking alcohol from open containers is legal on the sidewalks on Main Street. Gaggles of young women celebrating weekend bridal showers are a common sight. Are there lots of alcoholics here, I asked. I was assured there weren't. Death and addiction aren't good for tourism. One of my early choices after moving here was to invest in a Texas wine business that went bust. I thought that alcohol would be profitable during a recession. I wanted to support the local economy. I don't enjoy wine tastings. It's customary to drink more than I like. I don't care to opine on vintages and or fraternize with functional alcoholics who do. I later learned there are fatal car crashes along the I-290 corridor due to alcohol abuse about once per month. The recovery community is robust here. AA, Al-Anon, Rehab. Besides the bridesmaids, I saw happy couples and families, also groups of middle-aged and older women enjoying reuniting with friends. Clearly, Fredericksburg was a safe place for women. I have found it to be so. 
I felt a strong entrepreneurial spirit here, a place where people in business realized their dreams. Maybe I could realize mine. Newcomers bring their city money and buy up farmland from owners who find the inflated prices irresistible. I recognize I'm a part of that double-edged sword. Like many others, I'm sure, I hope to add value to Fredericksburg. When I was going through my divorce, I had two young sons. I planned a trip for us to go to a horse ranch on Galliano Island up in British Columbia, Canada. Before making the trip from Seattle, I spoke by phone with the owner of the place, who told me there were no stores there, so to bring what I'd need on the ferry. What might I need, I asked. Bring a bag of happiness, he said. If you don't bring it with you, you won't find it here. I was hoping the horses and the idyllic island would make my sons happy, which would make me happy, I thought. Coming to Fredericksburg during COVID, I was looking for happiness, for gentleness, kindness, acceptance, and the chance for a new beginning. Not everyone here agrees with me. Not everyone likes me. Not everyone has my back. Not everyone is kind. As in all places, people are people. There is a certain acceptance and humor and respect for life here I found lacking in Seattle. Fredericksburg Toastmasters exemplifies the warmth and decency I sought. Most of all, Toastmasters is an environment where I get to practice bringing my own bag of happiness to the table or the lectern. That is something within my power that, with God's help and the help of friends and colleagues, I can accomplish. I even wrote out and typed my speech this time, trimming it to come in just under the allotted time. Oops, I seem to have taken longer. <laughs> my question for you, how are you seeking to bring a bag of happiness with you as you journey through your life. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank, thank you, Margaret. It's wonderful to have you as a member of our club, and we, we do welcome, welcome you. The next portion of our meeting will be conducted by Anita. Anita is our table topics master, and this is the extemporaneous part of our meeting. So please, please welcome Anita. Thank you, Doris, and everyone else here. Since we have not heard from Hetty today, I'm going to ask her a question. After Margaret's very thought-provoking speech, she brought up bringing a bag of happiness. I love that phrase. And I know Hetty has traveled all over and actually lives in Junction and drives all the way here. Is it Junction? Oh, yeah. It's a long way. But what is the bag of happiness you have discovered with Fredericksburg and Toastmasters? Fredericksburg Toastmasters reciprocates friendliness and makes you feel so welcome. I had been living in Houston and I had to go take care of an aunt in California, and so I was traveling back and forth, and I had an opportunity to visit the Houston clubs and the California clubs. Each club has its own separate feeling when you go, but it always makes you feel welcome. And that I appreciate the most is the friendliness. And they always let you partake in whatever is happening. And I found my bag of happiness 
because people treat others, excuse me, but in California, everybody thought I was so sweet and nice because I had a southern accent. <laughs> but I heard other people say, people here are just really rude. Well, I found that they were really nice because I was nice to them. They reciprocated the niceness back to me. And that's the one nice thing I feel about Toastmasters. You always feel welcome. They always let you participate. And you get to tell them whatever you want to say. <laughs> and it never hurts anybody's feelings because they're just letting you say what you feel and bring your own bag of happiness with you. Hetty, it, Hetty is such a pro that she remembered to use the word of the day, reciprocate. Next up, who has not been called on? Paul is trying to avoid making <laughs> eye contact with me. She's a guest, right? You're a guest? I don't want to throw her into uh, table topics yet. Let me give Paul a chance, and then our guest, if you want to think about it and see, it's uh, one to two minutes of just extemporaneous speaking. And you can change the subject, which is great. So since Paul is a fun-loving kind of guy, and he probably has some ideas of fun things to do in or around Fredericksburg, I'm going to guess around. <laughs> we'll see. You may be right. <laughs> fun things to do. Well, of course, you all know I enjoy riding motorcycles, and that's very fun. So number one would be to cruise Willow City Loop outside of the time all the rest of you have cruised it to look at wildflowers <laughs> because that is the worst time. It's not fun at all. But other times of year, it's great. I love to travel with my wife. She enjoys classic cars and convertibles, and so, which I need to be ding when I say so, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. We enjoy to take her car out and cruise in that cruise town, come to town and enjoy what's left of the Fredericksburg that we all fondly remember, of which there's a lot, honestly. I think a lot of times if you remember the past, you can nostalgically get lost in that and fail to recognize the good things that exist today. And sometimes we fail to recognize the good things that have actually been lost because we're still in that nostalgic place where we think that things are as they were. But they, they are as they are, and so open your eyes and look at it. I appreciate Margaret saying, you have to bring your happiness with you, and it's absolutely true. You have to find that place for yourself. We can't always be happy. It's, it's an emotion, and we can't be driven by our emotions, but we do need to be conscious of them. Are you not happy? Why not? Maybe it's of your own making, or maybe there's something around you that you need to change or move away from. So I know I didn't give you a lot of great ideas, but get a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> that makes everything fun. That's my advice and the fun things that I'd say we can do. Thanks, Amelia. Well guessed? No thanks. No thanks. OK, I don't blame you at all. This is one of the scariest parts of Toastmasters for some of us. Let's see. Doris? I'd like to hear from you online. And what w are some of the most important things you have brought with you when you have made a trip, like maybe coming to Fredericksburg? What would you bring with you? So you're asking me, what will I bring in my bag of happiness? Well, first of all, I will make sure that I have a few bottles of maple syrup. I know I use maple syrup all the time. I've done speeches with recipes with maple syrup. So we do sell little bottles of maple syrup, which I would make sure that I'd have enough for everyone. And with a little Canadian uh, symbol on and, and everything Canadian on it. What else would I pack? Well, I would probably 
pack maybe some fancy clothes just in case we go somewhere special. I've heard a little bit more about Fredericksburg. So I'm wondering where we could go and 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 have fun and maybe some casual clothes because I know that Tim and Linda will bring me hiking at Enchanted Rock and I'll try to come at a time where all the special flowers they've talked about will be blooming because I do love to hike. And I know I always talk about Texas barbecue. So I will probably lose a little bit of weight before I come to Texas. So I can put about 10 pounds on because I want to go to Texas barbecue. So those are the few things. And I hope you will reciprocate that kindness and maybe come visit me in Canada and bring some Texas in the cold, cold north. Back to you, Table Topics Master. Love to reciprocate, reciprocate, Doris, with a trip to Canada, especially when it's over 100 degrees here and my air conditioning in both my car and my house are kind of mediocre, but I'm happy to have them. I've lived without them before. And next up is uh, our general evaluator. Doris, you're back up again. Thank you for that answer. Thank you so much, Anita. Next, we have our general evaluation team. And first up, our first evaluator is Tim Williams, who will be evaluating Robert Deming. Please help me welcome Tim Williams. Robert, you remember Ken come out The male equivalent of Erna Deedle Heine. <laughs> and do you remember what he brought to Fredericksburg? The walking clubs, the folk sports. He brought them from Germany because he had this connection to a sister city in Germany. And he actually re-imported some German culture to this community. That's my little bit of nostalgia. If there was any problem with your presentation, it's because I believe you had two things. Theme number one, gone, gone, gone. Theme number two, the ship of Theseus, which as a classicist, that just resonated so much with me. And I thought, well, how can I reconcile these two divergent things? And so I thought, because of Theseus and his ship, the Minotaur was gone, gone, gone. And I thought, wow, I can be so proud. <laughs> But I loved the nostalgia. That just, Linda and I moved here in 1979, so we predate a lot of you guys. All that takes is age, so <laughs> there's, there's not any valor in that at all. And Fredericksburg was pretty much shuttered and still in 1979, and we have seen all of these changes. The way you brought things up, not just as nostalgia, but we could just kind of live them. Porkies. Oh, I miss Porkies. <laughs> you just can't believe, folks, they would take a big sweet onion. Probably it was some kind of samurai that was doing that, but they would chop those onion rings slice the onion about an inch thick, dip it in batter, fry those suckers up. They just don't make onion rings like that anywhere else, do they? And for those of you who got here too late for porkies, I don't know how to, how to reciprocate. <laughs> I couldn't produce one for you even if I wanted to.
When Linda and I got here, well, let me put it this way. You've named more restaurants, eating places, and drinking places than even I knew had ever existed. So I know what your orientation was. <laughs> Interestingly, when we moved to Fredericksburg, it seemed like the whole place was antique shops and beauty salons. And thankfully, the economy has moved on past that. And we've seen the wine country come in here now. And I don't know if we will ever be Napa Valley. I don't know Napa Valley. But that kind of dominates things in, in many ways, doesn't it? And you brought that, that out and the seeds of it that were being sown at that time. So thank you, Robert. You did a wonderful job. You gave us a wonderful speech with a beautiful theme. And you made us all just kind of want to go back there for a visit, if we only could. Please help me welcome our second evaluator, the other half of the dynamic duo of speech evaluators, Linda Williams. Margaret, when you began your speech and you said, I'm quick to commit, and I jumped in eagerly, would you agree that is Margaret in a nutshell? <laughs> and we love her. She didn't at wait until we asked her if she wanted to join. After a meeting, she walked in one of those doors and said, I want to join Toastmasters. We said, OK. <laughs> and it didn't stop there. She has accepted a role as an officer in our club for this year. She's Vice President of Public Relations. And guess who had the idea for doing this video? Margaret did. How can I reciprocate such amazing things? I'm going to do it, Margaret, by changing the way I evaluate today. Now, I normally talk about strong points, ways that you can improve, and then give you a challenge. But you asked me to look for six things. So I'm going to take each one of those things and answer your request. Now, there will be all different things mixed in, things you do great, ways that you can improve, all together. The first one is time. She wanted to stay within seven and a half minutes. She knew she had a 30-minute cushion on the end. Boy, were you surprised when you saw that green. It happens because you are so involved in it. Sure, when you're practicing the speech, it worked just fine. But it's amazing how it expands when you're feeling the moment. So that's why you had that moment of surprise. It happened to me quite a few times, believe me. I've been talking that long. It doesn't feel like it. So you learned something about time management today. There's still much more to learn. But you're, you're going there, and you're aware of it. And that's the first step in learning. Great job. And you did finish it off, just to make sure you could. Then you asked me to check to make sure that before you gave your speech, you breathed, you took in the whole room, and made eye contact. And you did. And I'm only on two, and I have already got the green light. So I don't know where I'm going to go with this. But we'll get through as many as we can. You did either, all of those things every one, and it helped you make a stronger start for your speech. Kudos. Gesture with your left hand. Here was her plan. She was going to go with her notes with her right hand, and her left hand was going to do all kinds of things. Well, your pl it changed. You had both hands on it, except when you just really felt something strong, and you forgot about the place you were just doing this. How can you deal with that? My suggestion is, next time, just tell one good story, or maybe a couple or three stories. A story that you can put away the notes, maybe a little note card to remind you the order, and just talk from your heart. You've got the gestures in there. They just want to come out. OK. Then historical in Fredericksburg uh, today, the co contrasting, you contrasted well with Robert talking about today. 
Am I talking to people who are interested in Toastmasters as well as talking about Frederick Spurk? I have a secret for you. Everybody needs Toastmasters. So yes, you were. Anybody can gain from Toastmasters, whether you're a seasoned speaker or a newbie. We can all grow. We can all improve. So you worked there. And the last one was authentic and end with a fresh ending and a positive note. Bag of happiness, you nailed it. Thank you, Linda. Please welcome our grammarian, Carol Lee, to give her report. I chose a well-used word, reciprocate. Thank you for reciprocating my request to use the word of the day frequently. Our winners, Ty, I heard Anita use the word twice and Hetty also twice. Other people that I heard use the word Pete, Hutch, Robert, Margaret, Linda, Tim, and Doris. Some phrases that were memorable to me, one by Robert when he said, you should put your hand over your heart and sigh. I really, with that gesture, I really appreciated that. And then Margaret, patience is practiced in Toastmasters. I appreciated that. And then Hutch, when you described is it Erna as a lady of significant force, it just made me think, Am I a lady of significant force? Do I want to be? I just really love the way you described your friend. And that's my report. Thank you, Carol. Please welcome back Anita to give the all counter report. I'm not actually Anita. I only play her on TV. <laughs> I am very disappointed in our performance today. As awe counter, I wanted to hit this bell so I could make John proud. But I was the only one with the faux pas. And I needed that because I so is much too much in my vocabulary, being that I am not a tailor or an upholsterer or anyone who has any right to say so as much as I say it when I'm publicly speaking. So I appreciate you digging me, Tim. I needed that. But everyone else was wonderful. Hetty, you always do so good. I almost thought, I'll just go to sleep while she's speaking. But I didn't. I listened to you, and it was excellent. So that's, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Please welcome back Pete to give the Timers Report. Thank you. Thank you, Doris. Our speakers today, Robert 854, a little, a little long, but it was so much fun going back in time. I don't think anybody mattered at all uh, or anybody worried about it. Margaret, you were surprised by the red light, but guess what? You were still within that 30-second period, so you were at 720 and you made it. Congratulations. On table topics, Hetty, a minute 54. Paul, a minute 44, and Paul, in keeping with our informal themes of happiness and motorcycles, do you remember the old joke, what, well, how do you tell a happy motor motorcyclist? Bugs on his teeth. By the number of bugs on his teeth, <laughs> that's right. Doris, 125, and I can't wait for you to bring some maple syrup. And our evaluators today, Tim and Linda Williams, good grief, I think you guys planned this, you were both within five seconds of each other. <laughs> or eight seconds of each other. Tim Williams, 413, and Linda Williams, 405. Good job, guys. Anita, do we have a table topic winner? You can really slam it for that one. I don't have all the books. Is there some more books down? We'll take a minute or two and then we'll do we'll do that. Okay. 
So Fredericksburg then, Fredericksburg now, it's been a great meeting. We have two guests. Would you like to introduce yourself and say something about our meeting? You don't have to. You don't have to. My name is Tina Johnson. Welcome, Tina Johnson, our guest. Tina Johnson, I am familiar with Toastmasters. Linda and Tim Williams introduced me probably about 20 years ago. It was so much fun. I remember enjoying it, and I had asked to listen to Robert Deming's presentation because I also reminisce about how Fredericksburg was then and is now. So it was a delightful meeting. Thank you very much. I hope. She returns because she had no ahs in that extemporaneous speech that may be uncomfortable. Now, our Wes, do you have some comments about our meeting? This was a great meeting. Come, please come. Yes, sir. <laughs> please come. For the benefit of our people online. It was a great meeting. I had no idea what to expect. And I'm going to uh, appreciate what I heard. I've seen all the things that have changed in Fredericksburg over the years, and some of them I uh, wish would go back the way it was. And some of them, I'm sure, economically, the people that own businesses and all here would like for it to stay the way it is now. Thank you for inviting me. I hope I brought a smile to somebody's face. And if y'all would like to, come to Willow City Church on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, Wes. Do we have a table topic winner? Yes, we do. OK. It was a close call, but our Table topic winner is Paul Bath. Yes. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. It's maybe a coup. I don't remember saying reciprocate, so. Oh, oh. I'm, a, I'm not a very good table so topic. So since it's close, you know who the okay, winner is. Okay, then. Who was the other person? <laughs> That's right. I can't remember who the other people were. <laughs> Everyone was great. So Fredericksburg now is a wine destination community. And there's nothing in my life that a drink wouldn't make worse. However, <laughs> I do enjoy some revenue from the wine business in our short-term rental on Austin, West Austin Street. When we moved to Fredericksburg in 1995, there were two wineries, Bell Mountain, uh, which is on Bell Mountain, and the Sims Winery, which is where Grape Creek is now. And both of those are, are gone, and we have seen an explosive growth of the tourist industry in Fredericksburg relating to relating to the wine industry. And so I will ask our presiding officer, Carol. It's been another wonderful meeting. Our next meeting is a week from today. Will you be here and will you play a role? We have a couple of minutes. I'd like to invite Hetty or I can. You just go with Joe a little bit. Okay. So we thought, we do have this for all of you to walk over there. But in case you really don't want to take all the steps that it is necessary from that chair to the poster board, I wanted to go over the roles for next week. You have your pick. We only have one signed up, and hopefully he'll be better. Jobby, who was unable to be here today because he has COVID, is the only one that's signed up. He is currently signed up for Toastmaster. Every other role is open. We've got two minutes. Anyone here today want to lead us in the opening? I can write your name down right now. 
Hetty, thank you. How about General Evaluator? Who wants to follow Doris in the wonderful job that she did? Thank you, Anita. Who's going to reciprocate? Am I providing the word of the day by B. Groom Marion next week? Any takers? Thank you, Pete. What burning questions do you want answered by your fellow members? Now's your chance to be Table Topics Master next week. Oh, thank you. I'll, I'll be. <laughs> <laughs> the critical roles. Who is ready or who will be ready in a week to give a speech? Hutch, thank you. Anyone else? Who would like the wonderful opportunity to evaluate Hutch and let him know what he did well, how he could improve, and then challenge him for his next speech? I'll take on okay. that. Oh, Doris, thank you. Okay. Timer. Neil. Thank you. And what I personally find hard, but our guest Wes did a fabulous job of entertaining us with a joke. Anyone want to be joke master next week? Ah, counter. I would like the chance to ding the bells. I'm going to sign myself <laughs> up. We just have second speaker, second evaluator, and joke master. So that's only three roles left. So think about it. If you didn't sign up, there's plenty of time between now and then, and Hetty will be reminding you as time goes on. Do we have any other club business? If not, we are closing our meeting right at 1. See you next time.